I'm here once again with the head football coach of Fairleigh Dickinson University, Brian Cerise. Coach, as always, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to speak with me. Our pleasure, Neil. Thanks for coming. So my first question, Coach, is you guys are off to a very impressive start, 4-1. and one, and now You're just coming off your bye week. Tell me so far as we're at the halfway point of the year how you're how you guys have done, obviously, with the impressive four and one record? Uh, they've done very well. We've come together as a team. We, you know, we fought through some adversity in in some games, and and you always like to see that as a coach because when you're when you're put with your backs to the wall in a game at any point, whether it's early or midway or at the end of the game, right. you really like to see how the team responds in all three phases and. We've really played complementary football where if something went bad for one of the three phases, mm -hmm. another one of the phases would pick them up. And, and that's really a credit to the players and, you know, has really, uh, you know, helped us get to where we're at at this point so far. Those are very good points. And kind of leads me to my next question, Coach. You look at some of the guys that have really had an impressive year, you know, Robert Planner, Jagger Green, and especially Mike Panzerino. He's one of the top receivers in Division Three. Tell me about... What has helped those guys have the amount of success that they've had, as well as the team itself? Well, you know, in in dealing with with all of our, all the three guys that you had mentioned, but really our five captains, they've all played a lot of football. Mm -hmm. And uh, in, in Mike Panzerino's case, as a receiver, uh, he didn't play as a freshman, right. caught two footballs, and then the next year as a sophomore, he led the conference in receptions, and just has gotten better every year. He's very competitive and, and wants to improve. Uh, on, on everything and, and become better for, for himself and his teammates. Jagger, this is his third year as a quarterback. And as we spoke earlier, you know, you like to see that experienced quarterback take mm -hmm. the next step, and he really has done that this year. And you really see him uh, keep his composure in times of crisis. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if he doesn't, you know, if he throws an interception, he doesn't kind of pack it in, right. and, and he's able to fight back, but he's also able to be a leader uh, with the team in, in good times and in bad, keep the team focused, things along those lines. And then uh, and then Robert Planner, uh, from, mm -hmm. from the defensive perspective, uh, you know, he transferred into us last year, played right. player year with us, uh, but as, as most transfers do when they come in, they have it takes him a while to get to get comfortable with the mm -hmm. new situation, and you see him playing his best football of his of his entire career so far. And lastly, Isaiah Turner, uh, linebacker who's started for right. us for for three years, uh, played a lot of special teams as a freshman, is is just all over the place. He's one of the leaders in the nation in sacks, and and just happy for those four guys and, and really our entire team because they've. You can't do it alone in football. You, you need protection for Jagger to throw the ball mm -hmm. uh, you, and, and Mike to catch it, and you need those defensive linemen to help out uh, Isaiah make tackles, and, and Robert will be the first one to say you need, you need coverage in the secondary and linebacker position for them to, to get the pressure on the quarterback. So it's been a good start for us. Well, those are very good points, Coach. And that brings me to my next question. At this point in the season with a 4-1 four and, four and one record, do your – Goals change at all? Do the way you practice change? Does the way your team performs on the field change as the season goes along? Or do you guys just have the same mindset throughout the whole course of the year? So that's a great question, Neil. You know, really at this point, we're fortunate enough, knock on wood, that, that we're fairly healthy mm -hmm. as a unit. And we still have a lot of bodies where in the past we may have had to adjust our practice uh, you know, plans and, and what we do during practice with our players. But right now, everything stayed the same. From a goal perspective, mm -hmm. uh, you know, all of our goals are out there and, and still attainable, and, and we're just taking it one game at a time. We really, you know, our goal is to go 1-0 and that week, uh, whoever we're playing, and really put all of our energy into that game. Uh, we'll, you know, if we have to reset goals, we will. But right now, we want to keep our head down and, and grind away at that game. And let's see, you know, where we're at at the end of each game. Like I said, certainly the grind never stops. And my next question, Coach, is this. You look at, obviously, the back half of the year, and I think certainly everybody on the team is is feeling maybe a little bit of pressure or or not, depending on how you guys look at it, going into this se second part of the season. So what are some of the keys to continuing to have the same success that you had in the first half of the year? Well, that's an interesting question because it's important from our perspective as coaches mm -hmm. that we keep the players in line with what they've been doing so far. We don't want them to get, you know, too excited uh, because it's a certain team that we're playing or it's homecoming or anything along those lines or how well we're doing. Uh, the big thing is is that, that you keep the same preparation tactics that you've used all year. Right. You don't change who you are in your preparation, whether it be 
uh, early in the week, midweek, or late in the week, or, right. or even during the game mm-hmm. as you're playing. And, and that's important. You hope that players don't feel pressure. The pressure that you you feel should be self-imposed right? like any player because you want to excel and succeed. But ultimately, uh, you know, you want to perform your best. And, right. and if, if you're getting tense in that pressure, you know, that's not good. You want to go out, be aggressive, have an aggressive mindset, and go out and make plays, make it happen. Well, those are all great points. And my last question to you, Coach, is this. Going into your matchup this week, what are, what are going to be some of the keys to having success and obviously coming away with the victory? Well, from our standpoint, we have to, coming off the bye, you know, it's imperative that, that we get back to playing football mm-hmm. because as football players and, and coaches, you're used to a routine. Right. And you practice and, and then you go play a game. Mm-hmm. And having the bye weekend, uh, we try to really start our players off early in the right. week uh, with some energy uh, and, you know, some, some different things in practice to get them going. And then ultimately game day, you know, we have a mm-hmm. workout for us. You know, Wilkes is, is having a tremendous year. They have, uh, you know, tremendous in all three phases. They have the ECA player of the month mm. uh, as a returner uh, their quarterback is I believe the only two-time player of the week oh, wow. in, in our conference offensively and uh, and they have a tremendous defense so we really have our work cut out for us but we really try to focus in on us we want to improve that's been our whole focus each and every week that uh, no matter who the opponent is there are things that we can improve to do better in and hopefully the results in, in our preparation the results will will be what we want at the end of the game. Well, that's great. Well, Coach, as always, thank you so much for coming out today. I really appreciate you taking time out of your schedule, and good luck the rest of the season. Thank you, Neil. More than welcome, and we really appreciate you taking the time. I'm here with wide receiver Mike Panzerino. Mike, thank you so much for coming out today. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. So my first question is your team, you know, you guys are 4-1 and one so far heading after the bye week. How do you think the team has performed so far in your eyes? Yeah, we played well on both sides of the ball and special teams, so um, – we did what we had to do in the first half of the season. Now, coming out of the bye week, we just need to keep the momentum going forward and keep getting wins. Those are very good points. Now, my next question is that you lead the nation, not not just everything, but the entire nation in receptions, and you're also number two in yards and touchdowns. What has been some of the keys for you to have such an outstanding season so far? Yeah, I mean, our, our quarterback's playing great, Jagger, and our offensive line has really done a great job too and uh, just the receivers around me just running great routes and uh, everybody's just performing at a high level right now so it's it's easy to do that when your teammates are playing so well too and the coaches putting us in the right position to uh, just succeed is that's why I really what's happening is happening so those are very good points so my next question Mike is that going into your matchup this week against Wilkes what are, what are going to be some of the keys offensively for you guys to really get going and put points on the board yeah, we want to just put up as many points this week. Uh, it's a big week. I think um, since I've been a freshman, we've beat Wilkes every single time. So they're going to be hungry. They're going to come after us. Uh, they're a good team this year. So offensively, we just want to do what we've been doing all year, play fast and put up points. So same game plan every game. So we don't change really what we do. Certainly don't have to. My last question to you, Mike, is this. You're at the halfway point of the season, and I, I asked Coach to race this earlier. Does it – do your goals change depending on the record or depending on how the season's going, or does it usually just you guys just stay the course regardless of what's happening? Yeah, I mean, years past, we've definitely changed the goals midway through the year because it really depends on your success and what, what you do. So our beginning of the year goals have stayed the same this year because we have been successful the first half of the season. Mm-hmm. So it's pretty much it. We, we know what we need to do, and uh, our goals have stayed the same. Well, they certainly you know, deserve to stay the same. Well, Mike, thank you so much for coming out today. I really appreciate it. Good luck the rest of the season. Thank you for having me.